190 was bid in the sale room. It's about £155 to come back from this. Now, I know from your original investment of 220 that doesn't seem a very good deal. Tell me what you think. Uh, I am a little bit disappointed, but that's how it is. When you make some, you lose some. That's right. Welcome back. This is Hunting for Cards at Sandown Toy Fair. And what a busy day it was. There was a massive queue and it was jam-packed inside with people. So let's kick it off with some cardboard. Here we go. There's lots of wax packs on this stall. Very good stuff. Uh, Star Wars, A-Team. It was Master of the Universe as well, which I saw. I did ask how much the Return of the Jedi packs were and the guy said I think it was seven pounds each or could get the art set of four but then he mentioned about the bubble gum being removed and that just got me kind of thinking that well they've been opened and you know I'll just put me off a little bit so it's gonna be a mixture of footage in this video it's just some stalls with toys and bits and pieces on it then there's some card finds and then at the end, I may have overplayed it, but we've got Derek's stall again and some of my pickups. So sit back and enjoy. This stall was quite interesting. There was some magazines. Not that I was going to pick them up, but really cool to see. And when you see paper and magazines and books and things like that, and then there's always a chance you can find some cardboard. So in a minute, there's a few little sets that I picked up. I say little, they were completely full. So here's one of them. It looks like motorsports. I'm not really too sure who these people were. Very nice cards though. Um, maybe something that I missed and should probably learn about. Now here's a great set of cards. Rothmans 1984. It's got 60 pounds on, but there are some absolutely fantastic footballers in this set. Uh, Maradona's on the front, Ozzy Ardiles, I think there's a Pele in there. And then there's this set as well, who's got uh, Stanley Matthews on the front. That was a uh, one of his later cards in the 30s. So I'll come back onto that Rothmans one in a minute as well after these, which also had a, a Fred Perry card in. Prices were a little bit high. As I say, this one had £60 on the back. I think it's about 30 or 40 pounds on eBay, but fantastic cards. So here's that other set again. Uh, don't really have too many details on this one except it looks like it's got cricketers other sporting personalities in it you can see the Fred Perry card there in the top corner I've, I've already picked that one up at a card fair um, maybe once or twice already so wasn't too interested but nice to have a flick through anyway So, moving on to some of the other stalls. Here's another card stall with loads of folders and uh, boxes and sealed packs and sets and singles and all sorts of stuff like that. Lots of interesting bits and pieces. Varied pricing, uh, some of it expensive, some of it not too bad. Nothing that really took my interest. Interest to see there's some Caillou cards there. Obviously, I've been picking those up myself in boxes cheap enough from AliExpress. But really good to see a stall with loads of variety to keep the uh, card enthusiast entertained.
So back on the move again. A few more stalls. Lots and lots of trains and cars and, and stuff like that at Sandown as well. Um, match attacks. Can't go anywhere without seeing a couple of stacks of match attacks. And then a bit further on, there was a stall selling some posters. These are really cool. Not sure I would um, buy any, any of them. I do tend to see posters and bits and pieces like that at the boot sales. Which are starting again soon. I cannot wait. There will be footage this year. Some of that crazy stuff that I picked up last year, you'll hopefully see firsthand where it all comes from. So just kind of this stall on the left. I didn't get any footage, but I just saw out of the corner of my eye some Doctor Who CCG cards. I hone in on them, have a look, but there wasn't anything in there that was too rare. I've not been a massive collector. I remember buying a few of the booster packs when I was younger, but if it had any of the kind of main characters or Doctors, I might have been in there uh, to buy them. So coming up, when I finally managed to get to this table, uh, trying to take my eyes away from the vintage Star Wars toys, there's some Pokemon cards. Nothing that really, really interested me. Um, nice cards, but just didn't really take my eye. There was a folder with some Watsy stuff in it, which I have a look through now, but from what I remember, there's not uh, not anything really that uh, took my eye again. So as you probably noticed going through here, just really commons, uncommons, maybe a few rares. I didn't remember seeing any holographics. And then we've got a folder with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. I have no idea what I'm looking at with Yu-Gi-Oh. So just thought I'd have a flick through, <laughs> see if anything took my eye. If there's any Yu-Gi-Oh enthusiasts out there, let me know if I missed anything. And then there was some Star Wars cards as well after the MetaZoo rubbish. Um, <laughs> But newer Star Wars cards, um, I think after all of the, the Cypher stuff, uh, nothing that, uh, you know, that I was really after. And um, I probably got some of this in those folders from the other day. This stall was very cool loads of awesome figures that mandalorian figure caught my eye but i think i've said it before i can't buy figures i can't go down that road although i love them there was also some transformers figures on the top shelf which looked awesome so here we've got a stall uh, owned by a chap called derek if you have been to the london card show before you've probably seen derek's stall I think he's been going since the beginning when it was in Tolworth Leisure Centre. He's got some lovely sets of cards. He's got some binders with some really cool vintage stuff in it. And he's also got a nice folder with patches and autographs, which we'll see in a minute. So I didn't buy anything from the stall on the day. I'd always like to have a look through some of the stuff though. One thing that does catch my eye, you might have seen it in the clip before, is the WWF, uh, I think it's like 91 set that's at the back. It's got the Undertaker rookies in it. 
I love that daredevil patch at the top, but I've already got one of those. And I think there's a George Takai autograph in here as well, which I've uh, asked about before, but just never really pulled the trigger on it. Also then have to point out this ridiculously small Sharon Osbourne patch. Back on the Wander, come across another couple of binders of Pokemon cards. These ones look absolutely stacked. And they are, but mostly um, with commons, uncommons, uh, English and Japanese as well. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, nothing that really stood out. No kind of proper holographic rares or, you know, anything like that. So didn't spend too long looking through those. So these cards were really interesting. Uh, Spider-Man and there were some other Marvel cards. I think these are relatively new from the set that Panini just released So there was limited edition cards on there. They looked cool But I wasn't really in the market for just buying limited edition cards I might have looked a bit harder if they had the sketch cards They had some of the stickers as well and stuff like that those Pokemon box toppers at the back were awesome and they were extremely awesomely priced as well I think the Charizard was 600 now I I don't know if that's right or not but it just seemed very high to me And then in the back of the binder, there was loads of the Star Wars widescreen cards. I think they were like a quid each as well, which again, might be a little bit expensive. I can't, I just can't imagine that set is, is that kind of desirable and that expensive. And there we go, there it was, 600 on the back. Um, little sneaky peek of the price. And here we have a wild collector pool looking through comics again and he has no idea what he's doing. Leave them alone. So 
some more really cool toys, which I should definitely be avoiding. Transformers and stuff like that. And we are coming up to the binders again very shortly. So as you know now, uh, because I've shown them in a, a few videos, is uh, Derek's trading cards and autographs. And I just have to spend ages digging through these. There's just so many, and I find so many cool cards every time I look through them. Not too much footage of me going through these. I've picked out just a couple of albums which I might have not have shown so much in other videos so i hope you enjoy and i'm gonna dip in and out with a couple of my pickups So I'd never seen these before, don't know how I missed them, but there was some of the Crocodile Hunter cards at the back. I've been after the patch card for Steve Irwin for a little while now, I've been watching it on eBay. It fluctuates in price massively, but it's relatively accessible, there's normally like one listed a month. But I thought for £25 I'm going to snap up the patch card. I've seen it go for around 20-25, but I've also seen it go for about 80. I was also interested in the Terry Irwin autograph. I mean, if you had a Steve Irwin autograph, that would have been gone. I would have had that. Um, 50 pounds, about right. So I'd left that one in there. So whilst I flick through a couple more binders, I'll go through a couple of pickups. Uh, got this uh, Richard Dormer, Beric Dondarrion. From Game of Thrones this one was 15 pounds he was great in fortitude as well so I think that was a quality pickup and then Johan I'm not gonna butcher his name <laughs> so I'm not gonna say it anymore but he played Lem Lemon Cloak which was a lesser character in Game of Thrones but I think he is also in Vikings at the moment um, which is another great show and I paid 10 pounds for that one and don't they both have great autographs? So as we come to the end of this Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. folder, I will show you my last pickup, which was this Child's Dance. Another Game of Thrones autograph. And this one was £45. Legend. Great card. And I thought that, that was uh, fantastic. So at the back of this folder, you can see we've got some of the Defenders stuff. I really, really wanted Charlie Cox Auto. I really wanted that sketch card as well. But both were just a little bit out of my price range. But you never know, it might come back and get them at some point. So we're not too far off the end of the video and here was some of the other stuff that I was interested in. Really, really loved these DC sketch cards. You've got um, Red Arrow, Black Canary, White Canary um, and Cisco down at the bottom as well. You wanted about £50 each, which 
I think is a little bit on the expensive side. I'm pretty sure on eBay they go for around 30 and I don't think they're actually big sellers. Then, you know, they're not um, the most popular um, TV series or films or anything like that. So I'll probably try and look for those uh, somewhere else, but fantastic to see. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and hopefully you can agree that you can find cardboard at toy fairs. If I haven't got that point across in a number of videos now then I have no idea what I'd need to do. But fantastic cardboard as well. So if you're enjoying the videos and enjoying the channel please hit the subscribe button it's much appreciated and if you'd like this specific video hit that like button as well and I'll see you all very soon.